on the off beat. Who knows how to clap on the off beat?
is due him. He's worthy of our praise today, isn't he? Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you don't, with your, with your mind, this is just my paraphrase, right now you can't comprehend them. But I was reading that this week and it just kind of struck me how Jerusalem was under siege and Judah was in a really bad time in their nation when Jeremiah prophesied that. And you know, so many times we walk through trials and we walk through valleys, but the Lord said, if you'll just call, I'll answer. Lord Jesus, we call on you today. And we ask you that you would move in a mighty way in this place, God. We thank you, oh God, that every good and every perfect gift is from above. We thank you for the children that will be dedicated in this house today. We thank you for every song that will be sung. We thank you for the word that you have already put in our pastor's heart. And we ask, oh God, for an anointing in this house today that will destroy every yoke. God, we just don't want to come to a service and just sing songs and just read scripture and just do the things, oh God. We want an encounter with you in this house today, oh God. We want to know you in a greater way, oh God, in this place today. And when we leave here today, we want to say, surely it was good to be in your house. So move, oh God. Move, God. Would you say that? Would you pray that with me? Move, Lord. Have your will and have your way in this place today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is in this room.
singing this morning the, the chorus of an old hymn came back to me 
It basically says that I love him. It says, oh. he first loved me before I honestly was even thought about in my mama and daddy's eyes he already knew who I was what I was destined to be and he loved me in those moments when I was unlovable by a whole lot of people in this world he loved me I want to tell you this morning, if you're searching for love in all the wrong places, can I tell you you're in a good place today because the one who will love you like nobody else will love you is in this place today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and pray for some needs today. We need to pray for Brother Jimmy Goldman. Brother Jimmy was in the hospital this week. Uh, had to have a procedure done. And... Uh, discovered he has a tumor and will be going to a surgeon on Monday to determine exactly what they will need to do but how many believe that the Lord goes before us he's already been in our tomorrow so the Lord already knows what he needs and how to do it I told brother Jimmy we have a God who knows how to turn things around he knows how to change things so we're praying for brother Jimmy Mr. Debbie praying for brother David Hanks he's going to be having some surgery on Tuesday and we want the Lord to be with him and to watch over him Shanitra Tyler is sick needs our prayers today also the beaten balls continue to need our prayers today the Lord would touch and minister to them as well today I'm sure you probably have needs of your own. Could you just slip your hand up and say, remember me and my need? Could be family, could be self, could be, could be physical, could be spiritual, could be emotional, could be financial. There are a lot of things that we have need of at different times and seasons of our life. But that's why we are thankful. We serve a great big God. The children say He's got the whole world in His hand. If He can hold the world in His hand, then my problem is like a speck, which means it's nothing for him to meet the need today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's believe and trust. Father God, thank you. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that we have today, Lord, to come before you and to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is full of power, full of strength, 
Lord, thank you that you love us like we sang about. You loved us before, Lord, we even understood the concept of love. Even when we have lived our lives in a way that, that Lord, is difficult to even uh, think about, you would even want to love us. But you love us anyway. And Lord, today, it is that God we come to in the name of Jesus asking to meet us where we are today, asking to help us today, asking to do the needs and to meet the needs in our life today. Whether it's physical needs or emotional needs or spiritual needs or financial needs, or whatever it is today. Maybe we've got family that's lost and we just keep on praying that they would commit their lives to Jesus. Lord, help us not to grow weary in well-doing. Help us, Lord, to, to, to continue praying to continue Lord to knock on the door to continue to bombard the throne of grace so that you would continue Lord to send the Holy Spirit to convict of sin and that Lord they would commit their lives to you before it's too late Lord do a work today we've got many things we want to do today many things we have planned today but Father God we have learned that you and you alone know what you have orchestrated and planned. We try to feel the wind. We try to, to determine. We try to, to pray through. Father God, today this service is yours. Whatever you want, whatever you desire, however you see fit to carry out and conduct this service, we commit it to you today. And Lord, if we need to step out of the way, we will do it so that you can do what needs to be done today. You know every person that is in this room. You know what they're going, what's going on in their life. You know exactly what they need. Father God, we trust you today. We trust you enough to say, okay, Lord, we're going to get out of your way and let you do what needs to be done today. And Lord, if you see fit for us to proceed the way we have felt in our heart that you want us to go. Help us, Lord, to stay under your anointing and your covering today so that the best good, the greatest good can come out of whatever we do today. We'll bless you and praise you for those things today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Before we start one of the parts of our service today, I just want to make sure I take a moment and say, Welcome to all those who may be our special guests today. I hope and trust that you have been greeted uh, coming into the building, maybe since you've been in the building, but I want to just make sure I stand here and say to you how thankful and grateful we are that you have chosen to be with us today. Some of you may be here uh, because you, you have a, a family member, a grandchild, a, a special a person in your life whose child is being dedicated today, uh, we honor you today and say thank you for being with us. If you just came in to, to worship with us today, thank you. Uh, I hope and trust you feel God's presence and you have felt friendly welcome from the good folk here at Sweetwater, and we are blessed and honored to have you today. Also, I'll mention it again in a moment, but I just want to go ahead and mention it because I thought about it all morning long and still walked out of my house and left my checkbook at home. Today is a special day where we are receiving a special offering for Day of the Child, Dia de Nino. Uh, it is something we've been involved in for many years. For us at Sweetwater, it's only been a year maybe. I know we did it last year. We could have done it others, but I specifically remember last year. And uh, it is a day that, is, that happens across many countries, especially in Central Latin America. It is a day that churches use it to evangelize. And so they do special things for children. Uh, they feed them and their family a meal. They, they uh, make sure there's piñanas piñanas full of candy, uh, pastries, uh, a toy of some kind. Uh, for the child, and they do sort of a, a, a small, uh, we'd call it a children's church service is what we would call it, uh, for the children to evangelize, to talk to them about Jesus. And not only do children come to Jesus, but a lot of those mamas who bring their children to those places also receive Christ as Savior. 
Their goal is 750 children in the area they're trying to reach. They had 1,000 last year. So what we'd like to do is to not only meet the need that they requested, but to have extra so that if there are more children that they get word of, that they can prepare for that and not have some children to receive something and others not. You know how that would make your child feel. Uh, and also, we'd like to have enough to bless some pastors along the way as well. So um, the basket is back in the back. And if you would like to give, you can certainly do that. You can write a check if you remember to bring your checkbook with you. Uh, you can write a check, Sweetwater Church of God or SWCOG. And just in the memo line, write Day of the Child. Uh, and it will go there. You can use the app, Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y and search for Sweetwater Church of God, and you will find us there. You can scroll down, click Honduras, and then if you want to scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a memo line. You can just write Day of the Child, and that way it will be counted. Now, we're going to have a special song in just a little bit, and that gives you time for me to mention it now. You can get all that together, and then during that special song, if you would like to go to the back and place that gift uh, in the basket, you can do that. Or you've got time to, to get it all together uh, and, and give it by your phone or some other means. So we've been trying for several weeks to keep it in front of you to give you an opportunity to give. Uh, the Lord blessed us a couple of weeks ago and gave us a gift out of nowhere that enabled us to pay off our mortgage to make us debt free. And we've rejoiced in that for two weeks. But what a great way for us to express to God our thanks by not hoarding what we get, but to take his blessing and turn around and use what God has blessed us with to, to be the hand of God extended to the world, to literally do the Great Commission, to go into all the world, to preach the gospel. And I'm thankful to be part of that. If those that are going to be involved in the baby dedication would mind coming forward and sitting up here with me, uh, it would greatly help us today. We want you to be, uh, to be ready for what we are about to do. We have five babies or children that are being dedicated to the Lord today. It is always wonderful when a church has, yes, not all, all the families can come, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I'm a firm believer if you're going to be responsible to put your fingerprints on their lives, you need to be part of this, this process. Amen. We're bringing five children to the Lord today. When we say bringing them, it is an offering back of sorts. It is not a physical act where we literally do what they did uh, in, in the time of, of Samuel where, where they literally, the mom had him, she fed him, she, I'm convinced, taught him, uh, sang to him, nursed him, and when he was weaned, she brought him back and left him at the temple. We're not asking you to bring your children and leave them here. <laughs> God has given you that responsibility. But what we do today is a very spiritual thing. And I think sometimes people misunderstand its significance. And I, I don't know what anybody else does. I don't know how much time they devote to doing what they do. But because I believe it is such a spiritual thing, I don't like to rush through it. Because I want to make sure that the parents, grandparents, guardians, whoever they may be, fully understand what you are doing. You are not here for a photo op. Although you may get some photos, and, and those are wonderful. You are not here just to collect a certificate to put in your baby book, or now we call them scrapbooks. And you'll get a certificate, and that is wonderful. But what you do today, you do 
recognizing that what you have in your arms or sitting beside you is a gift from God. And with that gift comes responsibility. And it's not just the responsibility that the government gives you. It's not just that they'll come get you if you don't feed them and you don't have running water and you don't have power and, you know, and we don't feed them. We don't, we're not just worrying about getting in trouble. What we're concerned about is making sure that we are recognizing our place as parents. God-given place as parents and grandparents, and guardians for the upbringing, for the teaching, for, for the helping of our children. I always prayerfully pray about this because I want each one to be unique. Even though I may use the same scriptures at times, I want each one to be unique for the people that are sitting in front of me. And as I was thinking and praying about this, the Lord brought this word to me. And I had to search to find where the scripture was. I knew it was Old Testament. I pretty much knew it was Psalms or Proverbs. But I had to look for it. And the word the Lord just dropped in my mind was the word heritage. It's found in Psalm 127. It, it is a scripture according to to those who study and write, tell us that this is a wisdom psalm. Some psalms are about praising God. Some psalms are, are about trying to, uh, to, 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 to do other things. This particular psalm is a wisdom psalm. It is trying to provide wisdom and understanding so that we can, can make that wise counsel and decision when it comes time to do things. Some passages, chapters in Bible have headings over them. One particular writer has the heading over this particular psalm, everything comes from God. How many knows everything comes from God? Even for those who do not believe there is a God, what they got has come from God. Everything comes from God. And so Psalm 1 is 27 starts, Except the Lord build the house. They that labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman walketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. I don't talk like that. So I read it from other renderings. The New Living Translation says, Unless the Lord builds the house. The work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to His loved ones. You can work all day and work all night, but, but the truth is, God's the one who gives you rest. You can go out there and work and build and do all kinds of things, but unless the Lord's involved in that, your work's in vain. You, you can work hard with all kinds of soldiers and arms and do all kinds of stuff, but if the Lord is not there, it's going to do no good. Everything comes from God. And then he goes on and he says this in Psalm 127, 3 and 4, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. His arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. The message says it like this. Don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb is his generous legacy. Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous Children are a heritage. Dictionary.com says something, uh, a heritage is something handed down from the past. 
as a tradition, something that comes or belongs to one by reason of birth. It's an inherited lot or a portion. The Hebrew word literally means it's an inheritance, a gift, a property, or a possession. These children are a gift from God. They are, according to the message, a legacy. A legacy is something that can be handed down from the past as an ancestor or a predecessor would have something and keep on passing it down. The ancient of days, the creator of the universe, sent into this world his son. God so loved the world he gave. Do you understand that God gave a gift to this world? It was in the form of his son. And now God has given to us sons and daughters. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that this is a heritage. This is a legacy. From the throne room of God has been gifted to you sons and daughters. If you don't understand that they're a gift from God, then you'll never look at them as a heritage of the Lord. You will never see them as a legacy passed down from Him to you. If you don't recognize that, you cheat them, rob them from knowing who they are supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. You may look at them and say, oh, they're going to grow up and be the president. They're going to grow up and be this. Can I tell you what they're called to grow up and be? They're called to grow up to be men and women of God. And they can do that in the form of a president or a governor or some other thing. But if we put that above their children of God, we've missed it. We have to recognize their heritage. They are the legacy given to us from the one above and placed into our care. So you think this is just a baby dedication. No ma'am, no sir. This is recognizing that in your arms has been placed the most precious gift of a heritage and a legacy. And what you do today is to bring that gift as an offering to God, not physically laying it down, but spiritually and emotionally saying to God, you gave this to me. And I want you to know I recognize this as a gift from you to me. I will do my best to ensure that I raise this child in the way that it should This is why we try to make absolutely sure that those who are going to bring their children know that they are saved. There's no need to try to teach a child they ought to be born again when you aren't born again. That's hypocrisy. The best way we can lead a child is for us to walk in the same direction we're leading them. Don't tell your children not to smoke. When you smoke, oh Lord, I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. Don't don't try to teach your children not to cuss when you cuss. We lead by example. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to meddle. I'm just trying to get you to understand this is extremely important. We understand the church shares responsibility. We understand that you entrust to us when you bring your children into this place that we should do our part to make sure they get the truth of the gospel. But listen to me. The church is not the first place a child should ever hear about Jesus. The mamas and the daddies that hold the child and change the child and feed the child ought to be talking to them about Jesus. I talked to my children when they were in their mama's womb. I probably looked like an idiot, but I didn't care. I slid down in the bed. I put my mouth on my wife's stomach and I talked to my children. Wanted to ensure they knew my voice from all others. Your children need to know your voice besides all others. That they'll trust your voice. When your voice says, you need to do this or you don't need to do this, they need to trust your voice. So this is important to me. 
This is important to this church. And I hope it's important to you. So I'm going to ask all those who are involved today if they wouldn't mind standing because I'm going to ask you three questions. And I would like for you to answer maybe four questions. And this is the beginning process before I will actually invite you up here because, again, this is important to me. Is your purpose for being involved this morning to bring your child or grandchildren or your guardian child in an act of dedication to the Lord? If it is, would you say it is? Do you understand the solemn vow that you make is to lead them, train them, pour into them, mentor them, mold in front of them, sing to them, teach them, direct them, motivate them, and do all that you can to lead them to Christ? If it is, would you say, I do? Are you yourself or someone standing with you saved by the grace of God and comes as the spiritual priest to ensure the validity and the responsibility of this act of dedication? Say yes if that's true. Okay. All right. So first we have Addison Elizabeth and Cameron James Danley. If they would mind wouldn't mind coming forward today. Hey, sir. Fist bump. Elbow bump. Hey, sweeties. This is Cameron. This is Addison. Beautiful little children. We're going to pray first for them, and they probably won't let me hold them. I probably couldn't hold them. We're going to pray over them, and then we're going to pray over the mom and the grandmom today. Let's pray for them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want you to lay your hands on Cameron. I want you to lay your hands on Addison today. Father God, we believe that these are gifts from God. And we entrust and believe today that you are going to help them in their life. We know that there is a cruel world out there who wants nothing more than to steal them away. And I'm talking about their spirit, their soul. But Father God, we're not ignorant of the way the enemy works today. And we believe these are gifts given to them by God And we're asking today that, God, you would put your hands on them today. Whatever you purpose or destined for their life, we pray, God, that they'll grow up and be everything that you have determined for them. Before they were ever formed in their mother's womb, you knew them. And you had a purpose and a plan for them. And we're asking, God, that they'll receive the instruction and the nurturing that is given to them. And that at the earliest age, they'll come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they'll grow up, Lord, and they'll be powerful men and women for the glory of God. And we not only pray for them today, we pray, God, for mom today and for grandmom today who come here and recognize, Lord, that they are called, that they have been gifted and given that responsibility to raise up and to lead their children. And I pray today, God, that you would do that in a way, Lord, that they would never be afraid, that they would never want to back away from that responsibility but they take it Lord for what is given to them and that they will uh, be used mightily of your hand as they guide and lead these children. We give these children today in an act of dedication knowing that they're not physically left here but Lord they recognize them as gifts from God And that, Lord, they offer them back to say, Lord, we recognize their gifts from you. Now help us to be what we need to be for you. We pray it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Can I have one of these? No? Okay. This is Miss Addison's certificate. Can you show appreciation to to them today? Amen. We have next Brindley Elizabeth Ferguson. We have a unique thing. All of our female children today have the middle name Elizabeth. Isn't that wonderful? Brindley Elizabeth Ferguson. Is that you? Is it? 
Hello, how are you? Big sister. <laughs> We're going to pray for Brindley today. We are so thankful and honored to be able to be part of the process. We're thankful for big sister, for mom and dad, Lindsay and Wesley, um, for them bringing her to the Lord today. And we believe God has great things in store for her. You believe that? So let's pray for her. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray over Brindley today. Lord, only you know exactly what your purpose and plan is for her. We understand, Lord, that there is a real enemy that opposes anything that is tried to be done for the glory and for the kingdom of God. But we also know that he is a defeated foe. And we believe with godly parents and godly grandparents and others who are involved in the raising and the nurturing of this child, that this child will grow up in the knowledge of Christ and that she will have a hunger and a desire to live for him and to do great and mighty things for the kingdom's sake. Keep your hand upon her, Lord, and raise her up to be the woman of God that you are calling her to be. And whatever else may be destined for her life, Lord, I pray that you would use her mightily and that souls would come to the kingdom because of that. We pray over her and for her in the name of Jesus. And today, God, we pray for mom and dad. We pray that you would use them, God. I thank you for moms and dads who are committed, Lord, and serving you. And I pray, God, that they'll continue to follow and lead, understanding their responsibility, and that the anointing of God would rest upon mom and rest upon dad, and that, God, that they will continue, Lord, to nurture, to teach, to, to sing, to, to, to do all the things necessary, Lord, to remind the children of what they need to do. Even big sisters can give great influence in the lives of little sisters. And we pray, God, for each of them that you would use them and that God they would continue to walk in the pathway that you have destined and determined for them we thank you in advance for all that you do for Brindley and for her family we ask it in the name of Jesus amen amen show appreciation to this family today there's a certificate in here for y'all to sign God bless you amen now we have Truett Zane Kiesling. I save each of my PowerPoint slides that I make each year. And I have to apologize to them because evidently last year I spelled your last name wrong. And I recognize it when I went to change, so I apologize to them. But we're blessed and honored to have them, parents Brittany and Jarrett, big brother Ethan. Uh, blessed of God to have uh, new babies, new children in, in our church family. And we're blessed to have them as well. This is the first one I might can hold. Father God, in my hands today, I hold one of your precious gifts from your throne room special delivery in the form of this child in the lives of Jarrett and Brittany. We don't know exactly, Lord, what you may have destined or determined for his life. But every, every time I have a child that I'm able to hold in my hands, I'm always reminded that I really don't ever know what what I hold in my hand will become. I cannot just look at this as a baby. I have to look at this as a future man of God. I have to look at this as a potential preacher of the gospel, teacher of the gospel. I have to look at a potential missionary. I have to look at someone who, who may have the call of God on their life to do great and mighty things for the kingdom. Lord, I, I don't know what you have planned and purpose. You do. And whatever that thing is, God, I pray that you would use his mom and his dad, Lord, to, to help to, 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 to bring that about in him. Lord, many times parents are called to pull out of our children something greater than they even see in themselves. I remember reminding my child over and over, you can do all things through Christ. Don't tell me what you can't do. Tell me what you can do as long as Jesus is with you. You can do everything. I believe in my hand this child 
can do anything and everything in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for mom and dad today. Lay your hands on Brittany. Lay your hands on Jarrett today. Father God, they need your divine direction. This world is going to come against their children. Father God, we understand that there is a great and mighty God. There is a powerful Son. There is an entity called the Holy Ghost that goes with us. And He possesses the power to do exceedingly abundantly of all that we ask, think, or imagine. They need your anointing. They need your guidance. They need your help today. And I thank you, Lord, that already they understand the significance of that. And I pray, God, that you would use them in the upbringing and the raising of this child. We pray it in the name of the Father and of the Son. Use big brother Ethan as well to help guide the way. And we'll bless you for all you do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for not crying. Come on, give appreciation to this family today. Arm out of there. very much and finally but absolutely not least is Miss Peyton Elizabeth Miller parents Noel Cody and uh, big brother Brian brother Caleb honored and blessed to have them okay granddaddy which what are you called Opa, okay. Hey, sir. How are you? It hadn't been that long that I'd held you. You remember? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a mean face right there. I ain't worried about the baby crying. I'm worried about him crying. Hey. Let me see if I can hold this little one. Father God, in my arms I hold today, I hold a precious gift of God. Lord, I, I guess I knew it, but it never impacted me like it did. When I thought about how that as gifts, we have to recognize where the gift comes from. And that Lord, the impact that this gift has come from the throne room itself and been divinely chosen to be placed into the lives of Cody, Noel, and to be placed into that extended family. Many of them are, are on the front row here. Well, Lord, I'm reminded that there are many hands, many fingers, fingerprints that have and will have their hands all over this child, loving on this child, putting their hands on them to pray, Maybe even putting their hand on them to, to turn them in the right direction. Father God, what we have in our hands, we don't know what the future destines for her. But we believe, Lord, that she is fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. And that, God, she has a distinct purpose and a distinct plan for her life. And I pray today that, God, whatever that is, that you will help in the upbringing of this child, that she will be all and become all that you purposed or destined in her life. While the world may try to pull her in another direction, we believe that if she can come to Christ, that greater will be in her than will be in this world. We stand upon your word today and we offer her back to you, not to leave her here physically, but to give her back saying, we know where she came from and we acknowledge this gift. Now, Lord, we turn to this mom and dad who are going to be responsible for the upbringing and the raising of this gift. I pray that you lay your hands on the well and continue to use her as mom. Help her, Lord, in the leading and the nurturing of this child and for Cody. That God, you'll put your hand upon him today. And that God, you'll use him to lead. And for the brothers today, God, they also have a part to play in leading and guiding. Because sometimes, Lord, it'll be the older ones who come to Christ first. 
And little brothers are going to look up, and little sisters are going to look up and, and see what's done, and they'll want to follow in their footsteps. God, I don't know all that's going to happen. I don't know how it all will play out. But what I do know, Lord, is it's up to us to find your will and walk in that. I pray for mom and dad and brothers, and now this little one, Miss Peyton, to walk in the ways of God. Use grandmamas, use granddaddies, use great-grandmamas, use aunts and uncles and use nieces and use all the extended family, Lord, to help her know the way. May she always know that she is heritage, that she's part of a legacy, and that God help us as a church to do our part, not only for her, but for all these other children that we have prayed over. Allow them, oh God, to walk in the ways of the Lord. And we'll bless you for all that you do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all can go. Hello. Hello. Is she beautiful? On the show, appreciation to the Miller family. And thank you for all the family being here today. I know we have some grandparents and, and, and others that are here. Some are our guests today. And I appreciate church family for allowing me to take time. I, I just want you to know, I don't want this just to be something we breeze through. This is important. It's important to the moms and dads, the children, the grandparents. But can I tell you who's also important too? It's important to the life of this church. Because these are going to be the kids in our nursery. They're going to be the kids in our children's church. They'll be the kids in our youth group. They'll be the kids who are going to grow up should the Lord tarry. And they're going to become the workers and the laborers in the field of harvest here. Amen. Father, thank you one more time for the privilege to do what we have done today. Keep your hands upon us, upon our families, upon our children. And Father God, we will be careful to bless you in all of those things. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you worship with Les and Sister Christine as they sing today? Tracy asked us to sing two, but you know, we're just gonna sing one, so we had to change up a little bit. You know, it's ne if your children are, if you got saved late in life and your children are already older, it's never too late to dedicate them to the Lord. It'll be the best thing you ever did because God is our only hope. Let me tell you, it is not in a job, it's not in the school system, of course. <laughs> It's not even in a Christian school. Our hope is in God and his word and us being faithful ourselves. Trust God. I'm so thankful I can trust God. Just think about that. We can trust God.
And I tell my grandchildren, I said, probably the best part of God's day when we start rousing around, he said, oh, when they wake up, they may tell me that they love me. So I always ask my grandchildren, I said, when you woke up, did you tell God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that you love them? Do you? Do I? Because he loves to hear it. It never gets tired to him. And you don't have to worry. You're going to wake him up. He's already awake, waiting for you to get up. Amen. You know, um, it could be that we've already done enough today. 
and that the Lord wants to just give this opportunity for somebody who who may have forgotten that you absolutely are heritage you are part of the legacy so much that all you have to do is call on his name and he's passing by you know you could be going through something right now and sometimes the way the Lord works is that sometimes he's not always as uh, I start to say vocal I don't know that he's always vocal but he always makes himself known but then there's those moments in time when it feels like God is very silent you may be in one of those silent moments where you don't hear him talking where you don't see his hand orchestrating and you may wonder where are you God what are you doing God but I just want you to understand don't ever forget that you are a part of the heritage that you are part of his legacy that you were important to him sometimes sometimes it's his silence that gets his gets your attention sometimes it it is that silence that creates the focus that you need to quit looking in all the places you're looking and to pull your attention directly to him why do you worry why are you afraid Sing that, sing that chorus. Why, why are you worried? So why should I worry? Why should I worry? Why should I fear? Why should I fear? here when you cry. So I call on his name till the storm passes Sing it again. Oh, why should I worry? Why should I fear? Oh, every same Jesus is always so near. He lives in Just stand on your feet and sing it with me. Why should I? every service sometimes we know exactly what he's going to do sometimes we don't but I'm a firm believer right now is the moment Brother Terry are you trying to put off preaching I hope you know me by now I love to stand and declare the word of God but I love to see God move among his people and to do what he wants to do in their life if you hear and don't know Christ Jesus today what you need to do is step forward call on his name you don't have to worry you don't have to fear this very same Jesus that has been near to other folks that have committed their life to Christ will be right near you he'll help you move from where you are he'll help you call on his name he'll help change you from darkness to light maybe you're here today and you have an issue in your life you're struggling with something in your life you're just struggling with with this point in your life you don't have to worry you don't have to fear the very same Jesus is walking near. We'd love the opportunity, us and some others, to pray along with you today. Come on, sing it. Sing it, Sister Christine.
You know, everybody that I, I talked to coming up here wasn't asking for a single thing. They just wanted, I'm not saying they didn't have things to ask him for, or maybe the ones I didn't talk to directly weren't asking for. But the ones that I specifically asked, why are you here? Wanted to say thank you to God. You know, I don't, I don't know why I worry at times about what people think. Sometimes I stand here and I, I, I recognize everybody's not in the same place spiritually. Everybody doesn't think alike about what we ought to do when we come to church. Sometimes I struggle with whether or not what I'm doing people understand or not. As I walked up the steps, the Lord reminded me, when we get to heaven... There's not going to be, at least the way we know it, there's not going to be preaching. Matter of fact, I just flipped because I, I wanted to, to get it. This is in uh, Revelation chapter 4. The, John the Revelator is having the vision. He said, I looked and I saw a door open in heaven. And the voice that I heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, come up here. And I will show you what must happen after this. Instantly I was in the Spirit. And I saw a throne in heaven, someone sitting on it. And one on him was like as brilliant as gemstones, like jasper, carnelian, and the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. Four, four, Twenty-four thrones surrounded him. Twenty-four elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white, had gold uh, crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumbles of thumber, thunder, and in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is a sevenfold Spirit of God. In front of the throne were shiny sea of glass sparkling like crystal. In the center and around the throne, it's describing what he saw. But then this is what he said. Each of the living beings had six wings. Their wings were covered all over with eyes inside and out. Day after day and night after night, they kept on saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down and worship the one sitting on the throne. And as they lay their crowns before the throne, they say, Worthy are you, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you were created all things and they existed because you were created to for what pleased you well that's just what happens when you first get there flip over to revelation chapter 19. there's the 24 elders again verse 4 fell down and worshiped God who was sitting on the throne. They cried out, Amen. Praise the Lord. And from the throne came a voice that said, Praise our God, all His servants, all who fear Him from the least to the greatest. Then I heard what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd and the roar of mighty ocean waves or the crash of Lord th loud thunder. And this is what they heard. Praise the Lord! For the Lord our God, the mighty Almighty reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us give honor to Him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. And His bride has prepared herself. And, he has, and she has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. For the, linen, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. I know y'all ready for me to hush. heard a loud shout from the throne saying look God's home is now coming in his people he will live with them and they will be his people for God himself will be with them he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow crying or pain all these things are gone forever and the one sitting on the throne said look I am making everything new and then he said write these things down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true and he said it is finished I am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to all who thirst I will freely give from the springs of water of life for all the victorious will inherit all the blessings and I will be their God and they will be my people. Brothers and sisters, what we're doing in this moment in offering God honor and praise and glory and blessing 
is among the greatest things we could ever do as believers. Don't misunderstand me. The preached word is powerful. It is by the foolishness of preaching that men are saved. It is preaching that helps us to get our marching orders so when we walk out of the door we know what to do it is through the word that we learn to be disciplined in our life and how to help others to become discipled by the information we receive but brothers and sisters don't ever miss the opportunity to praise him and bless him and worship him and glorify him and honor him and then praise him some more and bless him some more and glorify him some more It's moments like this that he orchestrates because he wants his people to know how much he loves you. You don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus' name, bound, oppressed, tormented, sick, or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You may be saved, but you walked in trouble. You don't have to walk out of here troubled. You might be saved and walked in here with doubt, but you don't have to walk out with doubt. You might have walked in here today and you're frustrated. You could be saved and frustrated, but you don't have to walk out of here frustrated. Why? Because you don't have to worry and you don't have to fear. The same Jesus is always near. (laughs) Hallelujah. One person at the altar today sounded like they were crying to me I couldn't understand I said you have to lift up your head where I can hear what you're saying and I said are you here because you have a problem or why are you here and they said I finally understand I finally understand what has what the word is saying and the Lord is helping me get my life together and I am just happy Come on, the the Lord wants to help you get your life together. He wants to help walk with you in your life. From the time you become a mama and daddy with a newborn baby, or if you got a teenager, that at times is trying. He wants to walk with you every step of the way. So why should I work? this morning about the corner post of anointing it's so important that I I, I'll just I'll save it for next week but I wanted to tell you one thing I wanted to tell you what anointing does or what anointing shows one thing anointing shows is God's blessing God's anointing is such that it's designed to show his favor on people and on churches on groups that even in the middle of your enemy in the middle of crisis he can anoint you because at that moment you need it the most when you're in the middle of a trial or you're in the middle of an enemy 
The scripture is Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. One rendering says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. I want to tell you what we're experiencing today. We're experiencing an anointing that overflows your cup if you'll let it. Now, I don't have a cup. If this was a cup and it was empty and you come up to God and you have it upside down, can I tell you, it's hard for God to fill your cup. But what happens to us in services like this, when the Holy Spirit begins to move and He orchestrates things in just a way so that every detail of what we're doing from the dedication of children and the singing of a song or even the preach word causes us to turn our cup over so that in that moment when he begins to rain down his blessing over us we've got something that he can fill our cup to overflowing some of you need to turn your cup over this morning because what he's doing he's pouring out his anointing he's pouring out his favor he's pouring out his goodness and I don't want you to leave I'm ready to go I'm ready to pray I'm ready to say see you tonight for prayer meeting but I just felt the Lord saying if some people would just take their hand sometimes a waitress comes by and she wants to fill up your coffee cup one more time and I've seen people put their hand over their cup saying I don't want any more some of you need to take the hand off your cup some of you need to turn the cup over and say come on give me some more come Come on, let it flow. Come on, let it spill over. I don't care. What we need is to recognize the anointing of God, the favor of God, the flow of His blessing, and let it fill our cup. How many want your cup full today? Shoot your hands up in the air, Father God. Your word says our cup runs over. Lord, David said, even in the presence of mine enemies, my cup runs over. Well, that's a word for somebody today who feels like they're right in the middle of, a, of an adverse time, right in the middle of a difficult time, right in the middle of, of a battle, and they don't know which way to turn or which way to go. I hear the Lord saying, take your hand off your cup and flip it over and let me show favor over your life. Let me overflow. Let me overrun the cup so that it spills out over. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. People got their hands up, Lord, wanting more. Fill them to overflowing, I pray today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I'm not trying to prolong the service. I'm just asking you one more time. If there's somebody today that needs you, somebody that doesn't know you, don't let them be able to walk out of this door without making that commitment to you. Lord, if there's somebody struggling and they've done well from being able to move to an altar, don't let them walk out the door until what is arresting their soul right now is dealt with. Because, Lord, that's how much you love them. You will arrest their soul. You will not give them rest or sleep until they will commit themselves to you. Let it happen to somebody today. I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, Father God, as we get ready to walk out of the room today, just because there are people walking to go out the door does not mean we have closed this altar area. If in the process of people moving, there's somebody still being moved on by your Spirit and they want to walk towards this altar, Lord, we'll hang around a while because we don't want anyone not to have the opportunity to pray through or to have someone specifically join them in prayer and help them to pray for their need. Father God, go with us. Give us a great afternoon. Bring us back to your house tonight so that we can spend some time in prayer. Or who knows, we may spend our time in praise and worship the mighty God. Whatever you have destined or purposed for us, we'll bless and praise you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God bless you. Good to have Jared's family with us today. 
good to have uh, David and Christine's other family with us today. Glad to have you. Good to see you. We're glad you're living close. Amen. Good to see all of you today. God bless you. Remember, the altar's still open. If you need to come this way, come on in the name of Jesus. The windows of heaven are open. His blessings are flowing tonight.